One question that I get asked a lot is how to easily transfer a WordPress website, especially when you're working with a client and would like to transfer a demo site and actually launch it on their hosting account. So transferring a website can be rather complex, but one of the easiest ways to do this is using a WordPress plugin. We're going to take a look at exactly how to do that and we'll go step by step here. And there's three things that we're going to need. We're going to need this website. We're going to need the hosting account where the site will actually be hosted. And we're also going to need a WordPress plugin called Duplicator. And this is the plugin that we will be using to actually make a backup of the current site and launch it on the new hosting account. So let's have a look. We're going to log into the dashboard of the client demo website. We're going to go to plugins and add new and we are going to search for the duplicator plugin right here. You'll see it comes up and we will and click install now. Now once this is installed we want to activate the plugin and it's going to create a menu on the left hand side called duplicator. So we'll click into duplicator and we are going to click on create new. Now the first thing that Duplicator is going to let you know is whether or not you've passed all of the requirements that they need in order for them to be able to back up the website and be able to transfer it. So it shows that this site has passed in all areas. Then we're going to click next and it is going to begin scanning the site. It's going to again go through all of the requirements, make sure everything looks good and then we can continue. So everything looks good here. We can go ahead and click build. Now what's happening here is this is going to take a couple of minutes because this is where Duplicator actually is copying all of the files that the website has and it's preparing it to transfer to the new website. So it is building an archive which is all of your files and database and it is also creating another file called installer.php and that is the file we're going to use to take to the new website and that will actually install WordPress on the new server. And once these two files are ready then we're going to download those and we are going to take them to the new server. So I'll pause here for a minute while this finishes building. Okay, it has completed and has now created the two files that we talked about, installer and archive. So I want to click on each of these and it will begin downloading both of these files for me. Now the installer is just going to be a very small file and archive is going to be much larger because that contains your entire website. So we're going to let those download and while that's downloading, we are going to go to the cPanel of the new server and here's what we want to do. We want to create a database because WordPress requires a database to run. So if this is something you're not familiar with just follow these few steps and you'll be fine. We're going to click on MySQL databases and what we're going to do here is create a new database and a user and then we're going to use this information when we install WordPress. So we can call this really whatever we like and we'll click create database and I want to copy the name and I'm going to keep all of the, the details handy. Now we're going to go back and what we want to do is we want to create a user for that particular database. So again I can call this whatever I want and I will create a password. I'm going to use the password generator here. and click create a user. Now the new user has been created and again it's just important to note all of this information down because we're about to use this here in just a minute. And lastly what we want to do is we want to assign that user to the database we just created. So if that's the only database and user that you have you'll see that that's already selected here. Otherwise you can select the user that you want and the database that you'll be using and we'll click add. So we're going to give them the privileges that they need and we're done here. 
Now what we want to do is we want to go to the server of the new website. This is the client's actual live site. Now I have already taken a backup of all of the files, which is something that I highly recommend that you do. Because if there's ever anything wrong, the client ever wants to grab anything off of their previous website, they'll have all of the files. So you can download all of these files and once that is done, then you can go ahead and delete all of these. So I'm going to go ahead and select all of these and delete them. And that way we can go ahead and upload the new site. Now that the server is ready, we want to go ahead and upload those two files that we recently downloaded. We want to upload installer.php. That should go very quickly because, again, that's a very small file. And then we want to upload the zip file of the actual website, the archive file. Now, this may take a few minutes to do since it's so much larger. So I'll pause here while this is uploading. Okay, the files have finished downloading. So now what we need to do is we want to go ahead and run the installer and this is what is going to install WordPress and this is where we will be using the database information that we created. Now we want to go ahead and run the installer and to do this we simply are going to put in our domain name followed by a forward slash installer.php. Doing so is going to pull up this screen here where we can go ahead and create the new database and we can put in all of the database information that we just created. So we can leave host as localhost and then this is where we are going to want to grab the database name and user and password that we had previously created in the last step and we'll just paste that all in here. Then we can click on test connection. We just want to make sure that it actually can find the server and it can connect to the database. Of course, if it can't do that, the site's not going to work. So that's a good step to make sure that you do. Now that you've tested that, you can click that you have read the warnings and notices here and then click on run deployment. Now it's going to go ahead and set up the database and it is going to be uploading your files and just creating the site. So as it says, this can take a few minutes. So we'll just pause here for a second while this completes. Now optionally, you can create a new admin account, but this should already bring in all of the users that you had created. So that's just up to you whether or not you would add a new account at this time. Otherwise, you can go ahead and click on Run Update. Now in your final steps here, it is going to give you a couple more things to do. The first is it's going to let you know if there's any errors or any warnings. Uh, here there isn't anything that we need to worry about. Next, it's going to ask us to save permalinks, and this basically just takes us right into the WordPress dashboard where we can select the permalinks option that we would like and click save. It's as easy as that. Next, we're going to want to test the site, and all that means is we want to pull up our site here and we want to refresh it and make sure the new site loads. So we can see now that the new site is live. And what I like to do at this point is go back through. I want to verify that all the forms are working, make sure that all the images are pulling from the new site and not the old site. That way I can go ahead and delete that demo URL. And lastly, it's going to just have us remove the installation files that we had uploaded. And that's it. That's all we need to do to fully transfer a WordPress website.